What's shaking, guys? My name is Luke Dancy, and welcome to this week's live show where I have a very special guest, an old friend of mine. I'm so excited to actually do this as well because I haven't talked to him in quite some time. You know how things happen. Life gets in the way. Um, but we're talking about Peter Egging today, and I'm super proud to be bringing you a chat with him all about his brand new release called Stab. Uh, Stab is in a very popular thing lately because people love the visuals on it where you stab a pencil, a borrowed pencil, through a borrowed bill. Uh, you take a playing card first and you tear out the, the middle of it so that you have this window of where the bill is and then you stab the pencil right through the bill. You show it on all sides, take out the pencil, restore the bill, looks great. And today we have Peter with me to chat all about Stab and also to answer your questions that you might have about it. All right, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm so excited to be here um, and to be chatting with an old friend. Uh, that's what was fun about this before the show started. I was literally, chatting with Peter, we were catching up, um, and it's great because when you're around this stuff as long as we've been around it, when you see people that you haven't seen in a long time, it's almost like you just pick up where you left off, and it's a beautiful thing, guys. So I'm excited today to be chatting with my old friend, Peter Egging. So get ready for that. Uh, up first, I am gonna show you the trailer for Stab if you haven't seen it yet. You're gonna love this. Uh, visual magic looks great, and Peter's magic usually allows you the chance to just Focus on that magic moment, and this does just that. So sit back, relax, grab your cards, maybe practice some stuff while you're watching today. It's going to be a good one, my friend. So uh, here comes the trailer uh, right about now for Peter Egging's brand new release called Stat. We all agree that magic with borrowed, ordinary items is the strongest magic. Peter Egging reinvented the bill penetration. And this looks so amazing and visual, you will fool yourself. My name is Ron from Magic from Holland and I'm very proud to present Peter Eggings Stab. All right, my friends, and here we are. You see, I am no longer here by myself. I am joined from the other side of the world, my buddy and yours, Mr. Peter Egging. Peter, what's shaking, buddy? Hey, doing good, Luke. Oh, nice man. talking to you again. It's great, man. This is a blast a from the past. So good, man. It's so good to see you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, first Likewise. of all, I want to say thank you. I know you are on the other side of the world. Are you currently in um, the Netherlands, or are you somewhere else? Where are you right now? Um, yeah, in the Netherlands, I am uh, actually within my mother's okay. town. It's it's near Amsterdam. So okay. uh, tomorrow I'll be working with Magic Shop. And uh, cool. All right. Yeah. So yeah. he's so, uh, uh, much later in the day over there. I think it's what nine or ten o'clock at night over there. So thank it's you. It's now yeah over nine nine p.m. So uh, cool. Yeah, still good. I mean, it's summer. There's light. So it's true. All right. Well, thank you for joining us so late in the day. We appreciate it. Uh, it's, sure. It's yeah. good to have you here, and it's good to see all of our friends out there watching as well. I see you guys and. We're going to start jumping over to your questions about um, STAB in just a minute. Uh, but first, I did want to welcome uh, Peter on and let you guys know that we do see your questions. So if you do have some about STAB or maybe anything else Peter Egging related, because he has done a lot of work within the magic industry, uh, feel free right now to post your questions in the comments section. I am watching. I'll be pulling up your questions as well so we can see them together as well. So um, yes, Peter, can you give us, first of all, 
a little backstory uh, on STAB, where it came from, and uh, kind of how how it all came to be, as it is now. <clears throat> well, it's um, in well, it's as as most magic tricks, you know, develop itself. You have an idea, and then it, sometimes it goes in a drawer, and then mm -hmm. because you don't have a solution for something, or not, not the proper handlings, or um, you know, this particular thing was was because I, I used to do. Uh, Timothy Wings misled, which I think it's still one of the greatest bill penetrations love it. out there because I love it. Um, so you know, and and sometimes you just um, have an idea, try it, doesn't work, and then it goes in a drawer, and then years later you just have an idea or you saw something else, and you know, um, and you try to to put things together. So you you grab it again, and I used to do this with a business card as as a business card handout. So I would just. Uh, take my business card, tear it out, and take a bill, mm -hmm. punch it through. And um, but this one, yeah, it's it's one of my pet tricks that I've been doing for quite a while. And um, uh, and and some people said to me, well, you know, just just did, did, I mean, it's it's good, it's so good, you shouldn't release this. I mean, just keep it for yourself. <laughs> and uh, and I agreed with it. I I, I thought, yeah, this is this is so nice. I showed to my magic friends and buddies, and uh, they were all fooled by it because they, they did like it. And uh, and recently I joined with Magic from Holland. You know, uh, I, I'm a creative producer. I'm just working for that label uh, currently, um, besides what I'm doing. And uh, we decided to just go ahead and, and take this and um, and offer it to the magic community, uh, which we did, you know. Um, but the solution was, was there. I mean, we the method itself is... Um, you know, sometimes in magic, uh, the effect is as as impressive as the method, and oh, yeah. I believe that with stab, that's that that's the case, as well. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. No, it looks great. I mean, on camera when I watched it for the first time, when you start to get those really nice displays uh, of the pencil going right through the bill, I mean, it looks really really fun. And we have some questions coming in already uh, about the specifics uh, with stab. Unless there was anything else that you wanted to make sure you mentioned before we. Jump into some questions for you. Sure. Uh, so, this one's a good question. Uh, this one comes in from our friends over on YouTube. Um, buddy Chris White is asking Can a spectator do the stab themselves, or is that something, Peter, that uh, you need to do uh, yourself? So, could they do the stabbing? Um, well, th th that's interesting. Uh, te technically, they could. I mean, if you, you have to place uh, the pencil inside. Mm -hmm. But uh, they can actually stab it, and they can remove the pen themselves. So, um, uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, to, to keep it short, yes, it can be done. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, um, it's a nice idea, by the way. Yeah, it's cool because people always want to try to bring that spectator involvement yeah. into their tricks, which always does, you know, help to make Absolutely, things yeah. feel stronger. Um, yeah. Our buddy Andrew Nagy says hello. Uh, Andrew's a regular viewer. He says hey, hey Luke and Peter. So uh, hey Andrew. Uh, Nick Marshall, um, who was asking this about plastic notes? Can this be done? I think it was Nick. Let me make sure I don't uh, miss that. <clears throat> yeah. Plastic notes? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> um, yes, it can be done with plastic notes. Um, you can even use uh, another playing card if you don't want to use money. You can use another playing card. Instead mm -hmm. of the bill, uh, you can use uh, receipts, lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I don't see plastic money being an issue for for doing snaps. So um, cool. Yeah. All right. Good um, question. Yeah, we have a lot of good questions. A lot of good people watching today. So you're gonna hopefully uh, not get too overwhelmed with all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick Marshall asked, uh, "Does it have to be a pencil? Do you have to use a pencil to do this, or could it be maybe a pen or or something else?" Yeah, we use the pencil because I just like the pencil. But uh, of course, you can use um, uh, any pen. You know, uh, um, I mean, if you're going to use a pen or, or a sharpie, the only thing you need to 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 be aware about is that it it gets you a bigger hole, and which is not an issue at all. But just when making the gimmick, uh, because it comes in the package, uh, you get some practicing bills with it. Um, but you have to put the gimmick together yourself, which is no rocket science. It's actually it takes you about five to ten minutes max, and it's a one-time preparation. So you make the gimmick once, so you can use it over and over and over again. Cool. The reason why it comes that way, and not a pre-made gimmick, is that because you can use business cards, you can use, you know, 
mm-hmm. and that has a different size, and you, you have different currencies. So, uh, well, you kind of you can decide for yourself what you want to go with. Um, cool. But of course, you can use a pen, pencil. Um, I think even a sharpie would do. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't try it with sharpie, but usually I use a pen or or pencils. Cool. Most people have pencils. Uh, don't have pencils these days. So if you want to borrow a, a, a pen. Uh, it w- will be a pen, not a pencil. So uh, a pen is fine. It's perfect. Cool. It's no problems at all. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Um, this one is another good question. Uh, Alex Latore, my buddy over on YouTube, is asking, how long does each stab gimmick last? So basically, I, I can see where he's going with this. So, I mean, Peter, each time you're doing this, you're obviously you're stabbing through the bill. So <clears throat> do you have to make a new gimmick each time? No. Well, you do not? Th- okay. the way how the gimmick is constructed is you, you, you think you're going to step through a bill each time but the way how the gimmick is made uh is that uh you don't have to remake the gimmick after the performance so the gimmick is a one-time setup you're going to make the gimmick with your currency and you can use it over and over and over again sweet all right that's actually yeah. news to me i wasn't i wasn't aware of that myself <laughs> yeah well, it's it's, cool. it's yeah all right good deal that's pretty cool uh, so you don't have to damage your bill each time over. I mean, that's the illusion you create here. Right. Uh, but uh, it's, it, it is, fact, I mean, for that reason, it's very practical. Because, I mean, you just, uh, it's, it's a one time build and, and you're Sweet. done. All right. Very easy. So, one time build and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, let's jump over to Facebook together, real quick. Peter, here we go. Hang on. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm um, here. <laughs> Is it good for table hopping? How long for a reset? That comes from my buddy Chris Roenick over on uh, Facebook. So yeah, I guess two questions there. Table hopping and then uh, reset time for this each time. Um, hey, Chris. Good question. Again, all good questions today. So uh, mm-hmm. for table hopping, um, yeah, sure, it can be done. I think this, this needs, I mean, it's great for if you are in a bar setting, for example. You have a little group of people. I mean, it, it, it's a very theatrical thing, what you do. You can take a card, you can tear the centerpiece out. What I usually tell is that we're going to create a sort of uh, hole to another dimension. So I tear the hole out, and this is actually a healing hole. Mm-hmm. And then I take the bill and go from there. Um, but so for that reason, because it plays very theatrical, with the tearing and stuff in the beautiful moments, uh, I would do more for a little group on a bar. But for table hopping, it's perfect because a reset time is... Um, Basically, you could do it from you know, walking from one table to another because cool. the gimmick would be – you could uh, detach the gimmick from, from the card gimmick and um, attach it to another card and you're done. And that goes like in maybe one, two seconds. Cool. So you don't have to go back into your room or in your break and to reset it. No. So for that reason, it's practical. So I think it's, it's perfect for table hopping. Yeah. It's just a personal preference if you want to do it for table hopping because it plays so nice uh, for uh, a parlor setting. Uh, you, you might want to choose that, you know. Got but it, it uh, cool. Now it's perfect for table hopping. Yeah. Uh, another bit of love for you, uh, Peter, it comes from my buddy Andrew Nagy. I mentioned his name a couple moments ago. He wanted to make sure that you know that he owns Mist and he just wants to say it's fantastic and that you are a very creative magician, sir. So that's some love for. Oh, Mist. that's that's very kind. That's very kind to say. Thank you. Ah, cool. Here's a question. For I me. appreciate it. Here's a question from me to you, because we are referencing one of your older releases, uh, Miss. Yeah. Um, you've been around this stuff for a very long time, and do you have any, you know, personal favorites? And I know you're a parent, so you parents don't pick their favorite kids and things like that. But <laughs> people kind of look at that no, the same way with tricks. They go, "Well, it's like my baby." Yeah, you know, d- d- they are your children a little bit, right? Because yeah, it's true. Each one of your effects is your baby. Um, yeah. Well, favorites, uh, you know, uh, I have to say that my personal, I mean, it's, it's strange because uh, sometimes what could be my favorite, you know, might not be a favorite of what people think that could be my favorite. But mm-hmm. uh, that's because uh, it's the whole process of creating. I mean, you actually literally make it from scratch and, 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 and you know that sometimes she came just a long way to make to make something from nothing to something. So, yeah. uh, for example, Ghost Tag is something that I really love because it's um, one of those illusions and constructions that really, for me, fitted together. And uh, so that's what I love. Still, I do love Exit as well, which was um, the oh, yeah. the lace with the key, uh, the signed key around around my neck. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. thing. So we, yeah. And I think uh, Haunted that I did with Paul Harris. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, those are a couple of things that are my favorites and are still doing in my professional uh, uh, repertoire uh, today. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, let's jump back to Stab real quick. This is a good question coming in from Facebook. Um, this one comes from Nicholas Riggs. Thank you, Nicholas, for the question. Uh, he says, Peter, how many years did it take to create Stab? You know, that's a very common question, Peter, because people don't do a lot of creating, not because they don't want to, but maybe they haven't experienced it yet. They don't understand the path sometimes that it takes to go from yeah. creating something that just a, a butt of an idea to actually getting it to where it is a finished product. I think about, so. uh, well, as, as I told you uh, uh, before, mm-hmm. the initial idea was born in, I mean, about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But it wasn't, I mean, I, I didn't have the method yet. I mean, it worked as for the effect, but, but it, it just didn't have... Uh, the right method for it. Mm-hmm. So uh, then I just put it away. I just went on with other stuff, and then suddenly, while playing with another effect, you you just suddenly think, what what if I maybe try that mm-hmm. with that effect? You know, maybe, maybe maybe then it becomes practical. And sometimes things just fit together. And a lot of my creations are born accidentally. Sometimes you really have an effect that you think, okay, this is the effect I want to accomplish, and then you you know, reverse engineer the process mm-hmm. so you know where to start. But sometimes uh, you just play around with stuff and I'm sitting in my office and sometimes nothing happens and just put it away. And years later, you know, sometimes... <laughs> and, we, and, and we think that, that sometimes, well, the just, just the idea popped up in my mind. But I believe that in your unconscious mind, I was I keep on working on the on a solution because... Yeah. Because it's it's there and it never leaves you. Uh, only you're, you're, you, I mean, you're just not not aware of it apparently. And then, uh, uh. yeah. So yeah, a co- couple of years back, it just uh, started with a basic concept. Cool. And um, yeah, all right. And I think about it wasn't about maybe a year ago that I just you know did my version of what it is today. You know, yeah. after all the kings, uh, it just worked out all the kings. Mm-hmm. So what people receive is a, it's a finished product with a gimmick that uh, uh, that is consistent, works beautifully, and is practical, workable. Uh, it wasn't all that before. <laughs> it just takes time, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Only for a year ago. So, yeah. All right. Um, a more specific question about STAB comes in from our friends over on YouTube again. Uh, this one comes in from Magician uh, Cellior, I think is how to pronounce that. Um, question is, is the card chosen by the spectator and can it be examined? Can that card be examined um, after the effect, Peter? Yeah, so what happens is that uh, people are going to select the card. Um, the card needs to be forced, which, I mean, we, we're going to teach a very basic, very simple force. Mm-hmm. But they can sign the card, they can sign the bill, and the same card is handed back to the spectator in the end. Um, so there's no switches involved in the bill or in the card. Uh, we do teach a switch on the video, a very clever one, but uh, you don't need one. Uh, I mean, because the gimmick is designed, when you hand out the bill to the spectator, mm-hmm. then you, uh, they examine the bill because it's their bill, they're emotional in it, so they check it for holes. And at the very moment they check the bill, you hand out the card to them, and which is the same card that you started with, uh, and which can be signed. So, uh, so it's not it's not a free choice initially, but in the end, it's signed. You can give it back as a souvenir, and everything um, falls into place, and uh, that gives it a very organic, uh, yeah. impromptu feel to it. Yeah, Sweet. yeah. I'm just running the clip right now. Uh, this the spot where you just uh, stab the pencil through and pull it out, and you can show that the uh, bill is instantly restored. And that's what's great about that moment. We just saw it uh, on the screen there. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that that is the whole. It's it's like doing a mini illusion, basically. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's what's beautiful. I mean, the moment where you put the bill into the folded card, uh, if you do it for yourself in front of a mirror, you will fool yourself because uh, what you see is actually not what you see, um, and and the other way around is true because uh, it actually looks exactly what what it should look like. Mm-hmm. So that's so fair. And it has a 360 degree performing angle. So you could do it just, just surround it, um, which makes it uh, a real worker, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Well, but the, yeah. And the moment where you take the bill out, uh, everything looks 
just as it's, there's no no technique to be seen you know uh, it's just you know it looks like real magic and I'm uh, very stoked about it yeah. that's you know that's what's great is the moment where all the heat is on the bill is the moment where you don't have to run you know that moment you know it's like you can just milk the magic of the bill restoring it's absolutely a, it's a great because, moment. Yeah, yeah yeah and it's their bills so you know they're, they're, they're emotionally involved with the whole thing yeah. uh, but again you don't just you I mean we, we we're using playing cards here, but uh, you can, of course, we teach on the video how to make it with your business cards. So you would yeah. have a stack of business cards, have the business card selected, tear out the centerpiece, do the whole sequence, and hand out your business card in the end. Sweet. And another idea, for if you do it in a bar setting, you could actually use like a uh, drink coaster mm -hmm. instead of a card. So you fold the coaster, tear out it, and do the bill like a sort of bar bed. <laughs> and then the, moment, then the moment when they see it actually, boom, step through, they go, oh, this is just not the bar bed. Like, this is magic. And then do the whole sequence from there, which gives it a whole organic yeah. uh, look and feel to it. So they get a basic concept. Uh, they make it one time, you know, which takes about 10 minutes, maybe less. And, Easy. Uh, cool. and use it forever. And you can apply it to business cards, uh, perform with playing cards where you tear a center out of it. Or, uh, you know. Cool. Uh, a lot of possibilities here, you know, so... You know, you used a word in there a moment ago that I want to make sure that you get some credit for as well. You used the word that uh, this is kind of like a mini illusion. Um, yeah. I, I think something a lot of people don't know about you, I'm assuming, is that they don't know that at one time in your life you were an illusionist. And I'm not saying that to be funny, but it's, it's a true thing. No. Like, yeah. It's maybe hard to imagine, but I, I used to do that. Yes. I um, actually had some illusions built by Bill Smith in, wow. uh, in Las Vegas. So, well, well, you probably know the guy. Um, he's a very prolific illusion builder. He did a lot of stuff for Copperfield, for Lance Burton, and uh, I think maybe Chris. And um, yeah, uh, I, I tried. I mean, that, that that was my dream, you know, you know, to become an illusionist. That, that that was my idea of success, you know. And 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 I did it. You know, we had some shows, but unfortunately, I didn't have uh, enough work with the show. And in Holland, we had uh, Hans Klok oh, yeah. at the time was coming up, and the Netherlands is a very small country, so there was no room for two touring illusionists. So I literally had to sell my illusions. And that was a, you know, a little bit dark period in my life, you know, because I spent a lot of money into it, and I lost a lot of money. Mm. And, but that's the moment, the beautiful moment where I became creative. You know, that was the moment where I had really nothing. I just had my suitcase with my basic techniques as a magician, you know, and uh, from there, uh, creativity was born. I just found a button, be creative. And Sweet. so, on the other hand, you know, it's a very beautiful thing what happened is that uh, it had a reason why the illusion shows didn't work out. Otherwise, I would not be here uh, founding myself, you know, who I am in my true essence, which is being creative and ventilating my uh, artistic uh, uh, feelings, you know, and, and, and my creativity with the magic community. So I'm really happy with the place and it's a less more hassle. You don't have to go out with a truck. No, uh, <laughs> you really and, don't. And stuff. You just have a suitcase. Yeah. Because it's, it's all about personality. Uh, you know, no matter what you do, if you're an illusionist, magician, or a singer, or uh, a painter, it's all about who you are. As a per I mean, that's the true key to success. It's about who you are. Yeah, very well said. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting, too, because a lot of people go the opposite way. They start off in close-up magic, and then they ask for yeah. advice on how do I go from close up to stage. And I don't want to dwell on this question, but I would like to ask you for people that want to jump from close up magic to stage or to, to test the waters with illusions. Do you have any like just general advice for people that maybe think of that industry in a very naive kind of way, you know, the, the illusion industry or the stage shows and things like that? Well, think twice because there's, um, uh, if you do something, with, with illusions, it has to be uh, so unique and original. I mean, uh, there, uh, I see here in the Netherlands only a couple of illusionists that all do the same illusions. They all have the fire cage, they all have the, the and they all have the same manners in, in presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think you can explore yourself better as a personality in illusions, you, you should go for it. Maybe that's your thing. For me, it, it wasn't that, you know, the, my, my my thing was more, you know, being creative and being the entertainer, mm -hmm. and I found that through my, you know, I learned the hard way through the illusions. Got it. But maybe, 
that guy is a born illusionist, is now stuck in close up magic and, and just wants to go out there and, and it becomes David Copperfield. Mm-hmm. You know, so then, then you should do it. But um, just do whatever feels for you. And if, if, I mean, at that time I felt I was, I was Copperfield and, you know, I just wanted that and that was my lesson. Mm-hmm. So uh, no matter what happens, you always come, come out better Very well uh, at said. the end of the story. Very uh, well so said. you have to experience for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, right. just do whatever your heart says, you know. Yep. All right, sir. Uh, this is a nice comment. You'll uh, appreciate this. And this comes from our buddy Mark Call over on YouTube. Uh, he's saying, "Hey, Mark. Uh, hey, Luke and Peter. You both rock. Uh, you're both rock stars. Excuse me. Uh, no, that's Peter. Um, just, <laughs> just ordered stab, mates. Thanks for a great show. So, uh, Mark had some thanks questions. For the su- you know, thanks for the support, Mark. It's appreciated. You know, it's it's cool that people that may have been on the fence about something like this, Peter." Um, yeah, you know, we have a chance to have, you know, you come here and to, to answer some of those lingering questions and hopefully, you know, it'll get people to yeah, understand. I just try to, try to be honest as possible because, uh, without tipping the method, but, um, I, I, I truly believe that people are being happy with what they get. Uh, the, you know, once the gimmick is made up, I think they're very happy and this might be the to go to effect for a lot of magicians because, uh, you're going to appreciate how it works and works so convenient. Uh, it's like a mini illusion. It is like performing. If, if you perform it for lay people, it's like performing it for yourself. <laughs> uh, there's literally nothing to see, just just magic. And um, so, you know, I just feel proud to, you know, be offering this to the community because I, I, I truly believe this is something that's really good uh, and people are happy with because, um, um, it, and it's also because it's uh, a very, a very uh, attractive plot, you know. The bill penetration has oh, yeah. intrigued me for for many 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 years, and uh, well, things with board things with board items is, is always so strong, yeah. and with an organic touch to it. So, uh, yeah. Well, speaking of what you just said there, I have a question from Alex uh, over on Facebook. Alex is a friend of mine from Scotland. Um, he Hi, says uh, he says there are already a couple of pen pencil through notes out there. Is this a new concept theory wise? Uh, for it or is it more of a new performance as using the card so i guess what he's saying is um you know the plot's been around uh yeah 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 you know um, so from a method standpoint yeah i got the qu- yeah. i think i got the question okay. I, I mean the cool. the plot is not 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 mine mm-hmm. or or any, anyone to claim it's just a plot that's you know belongs to everybody i guess i don't know who who came up with the first mm-hmm. thing uh, i think before misled there was something if if you dig deeper into the history mm-hmm. Uh, but you no, know, it's, it's not just a new handling, uh, or a, like a, like a presentation a hookup with a card. It's a completely brand new method to mm-hmm. it. And, uh, and the method is, is basically what you buy, you know, uh, and then, you know, you can do it with the card, as I said before, with a business card or yeah. with a, uh, a drink coaster, but, um, no, it's, it's, um, it's something that, that can be done. Uh, instantly, I mean, if, if you were just sitting at a bar and, uh, and you would have your deck of cards ready to go and uh, you just borrow a bill, borrow a pen, boom, do it. Um, but to come back to your question, it's uh, it's not only uh, just a presentational thing with a, using a playing card, but mm-hmm. it adds more th- theater to it. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it adds more mystery to it. If you would do it straight away with, with a pen and a bill without anything, like now we have as cover we have a playing card i mean that hole really focuses on a centerpiece of the bill so it really draws the focus to that point which is what i like and it adds more mystery to the whole effect mm-hmm. because otherwise it would be too much like like uh i don't know maybe maybe may too perfect and now it leaves something to be there there's a kind of mystery there's a card yeah. in it it's like yeah. you tear a hole in it and there's a hole the healing hole like a hole to another universe and it adds for a nice pattern as well um, and it, it looks like if you were doing sort of bar bed, that's what I like as well. Because, oh, yeah. uh, and then it goes into boom, you stab it through. So, um, no, it's a brand new method and this has never been used and applied before in this concept. Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. Chris Ronick is saying you could use a drinking straw. Have you ever thought of using the straw to go through the, that's a pretty cool idea. I love it. 
Yeah. No, ne never crossed my mind, but I love it. Cool. That's even better. I love it. <laughs> we'll call it straw. That's 2.0, straw. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to use it. <laughs> it's not stab anymore, it's straw. <laughs> straw. Uh, yeah, you had something with cap, did you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sky cap, yeah. <laughs> sky cap. Yeah. Great, I love that. that, that, that I mean, that could be done with a straw as well, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's meant. That's kind of how it all came together. Meant, meant to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's a great effect. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, what was the uh, question here? Uh, there was someone who was asking about the specific of the card. I, I'm going to try to find the comment. It was over on YouTube, I believe. Uh, someone said in the trailer, it looks like it's the Jack of Clubs, I think, or it's a Jack. Uh, does it have mm -hmm. to be that card every time, or you know, are we tiptoeing around the court cards to help help out? Oh no, it, it, we, we just use it for the, the demo. Uh, uh, okay. But no, any card can be. I mean, you have any choice of any card because the gimmick you just attach it to to that card that you want. Mm -hmm. So it can be any card in the deck. Okay, sweet, very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, another couple good questions coming in over on YouTube. Thank you guys if, again. Uh, we had Peter Egg joining us live today. Uh, we've got about another 30 minutes with him, so if you have questions about stab... Wow, time flies. I told you, dude, when we started, this was going to fly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I warned you. Uh, we are talking about Stab today, his brand new release, uh, a beautiful piece of magic that uh, we're, we're having all your questions answered today, as many of them as we can anyway, so uh, we'll get back to those right now. Uh, Jake the Cleric is saying, uh, is, hi, Peter, is it, a, is it practical that you can easily carry with you? So when it comes to the practicality... Uh, I guess we could talk a little bit about that because I know we did talk about it a little bit with the uh, table hopping or strolling stuff, but um, is it something that's easy to carry with you? Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jake? Well, I know Jake. Jake? Oh, cool. Okay. Look at you guys. Yeah. Uh, I said just night. Glad you're watching. Oh, cool. Um, so, um, yeah, well, uh, the gimmick, you can actually store the gimmick into uh, your wallet. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can just take it with you and you've, I mean, uh, you, well, actually what I do is I just carry it in my wallet, but I just attach it to my credit card and I put it in the credit card slot and that's it. You know? it. And whenever I uh, want to do the effect, you can go to a bar, borrow a deck of cards, take the gimmick, set it up in one second, and then you can do it with any deck in the world. Mm -hmm. So you can use a, technically a borrowed deck as well. Just set up needs to be one second, which can be done, you know, when you grab it or when you just, you know, when if you feel suitable. Of course, when you're table hopping, you have your own cards. But if you like like bar magic or go more organic, you can grab a deck from the bar while you walk back to the table. You're done. Your setup is done. Sweet. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, there was another one, another good question over here on YouTube. Uh, where was it here? So, yes, yeah, someone asked if it can be kept in your wallet, uh, so it's always ready to go. I think you just yes. answered that for us, so thank yeah. you. Um, let's see, what was the other one? Uh, oh, yeah, this one's from uh, Warlance. Uh, about stab, can it be examined? So, Peter, let's kind of back up just a, a little bit when it comes to the basis, um, or the basics with stab, excuse me. Um, you do the trick. Things can be examined. Yes, no. What's kind of the details there? I know we're trying to cover as many of the little things as possible. And of course, people yeah. Want to know, well, you know, let me try it as 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 fair as possible without exposing anything. Of course. Um, so let me uh, think about how I'm going to put that. Um, yes. Basically, in the end, everything is examinable. Mm -hmm. um, so you you're going to borrow a bill. You're going to borrow the pen, and the card is of course forced, but it's going to be a signed card if you want. But that same card is not switched, so that can be examined. But not on the moment where you do the effect, mm -hmm. which is a good moment for not having a card examined because you're performing. Then after trick, they, you hand the bill out. They would teach you how to very easily ditch the gimmick, and you hand out with the card, and that's it. Um, so in short, yes, everything is examinable in the end. So the bill, the pen, and the card. Perfect. And we see here in the trailer, just want to make sure this is noted again, no pun intended, uh, this works with any currency. I think that's an important note to make sure people Yeah, the, the, uh, the gimmick adapts to any currency. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. And of course, if you want to use like a lottery ticket, you can use a lottery ticket or uh, a gas station a receipt or something. Uh, yeah, that works as well. Perfect. But any currency, plastic money, um, not at all. So you would, um, if you make the gimmick, Another point is that you would, I mean, 
here with euros, we need to uh, use a 10 euro. So you need to, um, to cut a bill. So with America, you can go with a $1 bill. Mm -hmm. So that's the only, uh, I mean, you, you, you have to make a commitment to the gimmick. But it's a one-time setup. Um, so uh, the, the, the lowest value here in, in, in Europe is we have five euros. So, yeah. um, but that's, that's you know, just a one-time thing. And you could even maybe go with a copy or something. And we thought about that as well. But uh, we want to go, I mean, there's always maybe a little discrepancy in, you know, in the color in the bill. So we want to go for the real thing. Uh, and and also since it's a one-time setup, it's not a not a huge commitment you have to make. Um, I mean, it's it's again you're not gonna ruin a bill every time you do it. It just looks like it, but you're using the same gimmick over and over again forever. So I probably you know uh, uh, less a lifetime. Perfect. All right. Um, speaking of some of your older stuff again, uh, this comes in from uh, Facebook. Uh, my buddy Daniel Rick says, could your effect AE 2.0 be done as a follow-up after stab? That's a good question. Uh, so yeah, could it be done as a follow-up after you perform stab? Um, yeah, well, it, thinking about it, it could be done. Um, but then you would need to switch the bill. Got it. Since it's a bar bill, you would need to switch it. Um, which could be done maybe with, um, you know, when you just hand them the card to examine. They, switch, they examine the bill, then you hand out the card, they examine the card, and then you go with both hands in your pocket, come out with a, a you know, a different, I don't know, item or whatever you put away and then do the switch or uh, maybe use a him or wallet or whatever. Can be done, which is, um, which is a nice idea, but you need to switch the bill because you start with a bar bill with stamp, and then you have to switch it for for the AE 2.0 uh, gimmick. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but okay. sure, it can be done. All right. Cool. Um, out of all the things that you've created, um, what was the first thing that you created? Just as another side note, I like to make sure guys get to know a little bit more about you than just what we're talking about today. So, what was your oh, first? Oh, the very. Yeah. The first thing was uh, was uh, <laughs> <laughs> going back. It was, it, it's a doubt. Yeah, it came back now. Um, it was born out of a lot of frustration because I just lost one hundred thousand euros. Well, no, guilds at that time. Well, I mean, they, they were euros, but I, I had a illusion show that didn't work out. It, it went up in smoke. So, um, and, and and you know that's where my creativity came from. So. Um, what I came up with was a color change, and the color change was called uh, the melt change. I remember this. Yeah, and and that was out, you know, well, decades ago, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, but it was the first thing, and and uh, the folks at Murphy's, I think Tim Trono uh, said, "Well, that's great. You know, if you have any any other tricks that we can can uh, distribute for you, just let me know." You know, and cool. But I didn't have any other tricks, so I thought, you know, it wouldn't be cool if I could have another <laughs> trick. Yeah. And that's how I force myself apparently to be creative and and I and I'm doing this now for 15 years sharing my magic with the rest of the community but for for 15 years I'm thinking well this is the last idea I have no ideas at all this is it I'm done <laughs> <laughs> Nope no sir No no no, no. Yeah. because you just you know um, have to you know think of possibilities and uh, you know yeah. But it's just the creativity. It's, it's who you are. I mean, this is, you know, sometimes I think magic chose me instead of I like that. Uh, me choosing magic. I like that a lot. Um, speaking of creativity, and I, this is a very big question, but we don't have to dwell on it for too long. But I, again, pretty popular question. When it comes to being a creative magician or wanting to be creative, I mean, Peter, let's, let's be honest here, man. You and I have been around this stuff before. Internet, yeah. internet dealers, online dealers, they even existed. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, like they weren't as yeah. prevalent as they from, are now. From a catalog, you know, you had to order something. Yeah. These days we have demos, you know, and stuff like that. And if there's not one, people complain about it, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. well, there was a time where I had to order from, from, from a, like a, a catalog. Yeah. And then you have to, you know, pray and see what comes in the mail, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah true. You'll add copy, yeah. But... For those people now, because of the internet and everybody sees everything now, it, it seems like it's now become this quote-unquote cool thing to want to be a creator. 
You know what I mean? It's kind of, it used to be this different thing, at least for me growing up, you, you saw someone like Paul Harris or, you know, the Daryls or the Amars, the big players, they were yeah. like on another level. But now it seems like because of the internet and technology, it's like so easy for anyone just to think they can just jump up to. Usually a lot of young guys, yeah. they, they, you know, uh, they want to be the next, next big creative star. Exactly. You know, they, and, and, yeah. Um, yeah. but they, they try too hard to be that way. Um, yeah. you know, if I could do something else tomorrow, you know, just, you know, maybe before me more, I would go that route in my life. I mean, I, I never tried to be a creator and still today I just do my thing, but I never try hard to be a creator because it just happened to me and this is who I am. This is what I do. But those guys, I feel push too hard. They want to be something that they are not. And you have some good ones. I mean, some young guys have really some good ideas, but it's all about the ego, you know. It's all about, you know, uh, recognition, and uh, they want to be someone. And um, yeah, yeah, and you see it more and more. So, um, yeah. kind any, of one day flies. Any, any word of wisdom, you know, any words of wisdom, I should say, when it comes to that type of mentality for people just to slow down and enjoy the ride. I mean, it's. I try to hammer it home, but. I mean, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on, you know, people that are so excited and start doing that prematurely. Like, what would you say to that, you know? Well, well, you have to first, you know, to, yeah, yeah well, that, that's what Paul Harris said as well. And I, and I like that. He said, you have, first, you have to know yourself as a person before you can, can, can be a magician. Right. So uh, you have to know uh, who you are before you know what you can communicate with your people. So do you want to communicate, hey, look what I can, I'm Mr. Magic, and I know something you can't, I mean, you don't understand this, look how smart I am. <laughs> do you want to communicate that, or do you want to communicate fun and pleasure? So you, you do, I mean, you have to know first who you are before you can become a magician. So the creative part, if that is something that you have to do because you want to get that name out there, you want to be famous, don't do it. Just first look into yourself, who you are, and maybe you are a creator. Then just by all means do it. But first look into yourself, who you are, and if you, uh, and usually that takes a long time. I mean, um, I've been thinking for 25 years, and I, I found out that I, that, that I shouldn't think. That was the main problem with my mind. I, I, I was, you know, thinking too much about everything. And that really locked my mind, and I, I locked myself into my mind, which is another. It, this is the other side of being creative: is that I have a very busy mind. It, it, it never is. It's never quiet. Which is in your private life also very, mm. you know, it's not fun. When I am a creative, when I'm in a creative process, and when when you are, are at your office and your wife and children are around, sometimes it's like being a zombie, you know, because it's, and it's not fun for my family, you know, to. To be, you know, around with me at that time. Mm. So, you know, and what, what what I meant to say is that I don't choose to be creative. It just it just comes um, because I don't try too hard. It it and, and then it's genuine. It's authentic, and you know. But that's what you need to find out who yeah. you are, and um, and from there go. But you know, first make sure you are you know familiar with all the basics. And before you start illusions, um, I think it's important. I mean. We have some illusionists here that uh, think big. They want to be uh, the next big star in magic, David Copperfield. And uh, they buy. F they think they they can buy that off with a lot of money with huge illusions, and they're the next big illusionists. But when you ask them to do a double lift or a proper retention vanish, they can't do it because they don't know the basics. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's where it all started. If you know that, you know. And, and, and this, I mean, if you know... All the basics, it's, it's all you need to know for the rest of your life. I'm still doing the double lift and I'm trying to improve it because I'm just, it's those techniques, those techniques is the one I'm using uh, still today in my performances. And they all, they all come down to a few basic techniques. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. Don't run, don't, don't be too, I mean, just, just, just keep it simple and, uh, and yeah. find your true essence in who you are. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I I appreciate. That was the, a long answer, but I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a good answer, and I appreciate the insight because honestly, I think that um, you know you're someone a lot of people look up to, and hearing words like that might really speak to someone that needs to hear it. You know, that's 
people aren't going to learn the right ways without people. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that if you have an idea, you should not do it because yeah. uh, 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 you, you can be creative unless you know the basics. No, that, yeah. that's not true. But uh, yeah. you feel if it's genuine. If it's really genuine, then go for it and do it because yeah. that's then, then it comes from the right place. Very well said. Uh, a nice uh, another fellow creator uh, stepped up here on our Facebook page, and I want to make sure you get some love from him. He's one of my favorite guys as well. My, Mr. Michael Chatelaine's watching. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, and he had a nice word. He says, Bonsoir. "Yeah, there you go. A little uh, little French action coming from Peter there." Um, he says, "Peter, you are a genius, my friend. I love stats." No, no, no. So, no. Some nice well, words. in fact, he, he he is the one who's a real genius. And and whenever I met him, and I know Michael is sh shaking now. He's probably how you are, because <laughs> when we meet in Blackpool. God, he's it said, man, you're a genius. No, 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 you are. No, no, totally not. I'm not, I'm just, everything happens just, but I'm not a, you are a genius. That's funny. So I do, I do have a lot of respect for Michael Bikel. Uh Yeah, you know, with the pace, he came up with stuff and everything is good he does, you know. Unfortunately, I just have a drawer full of stuff and sometimes something good pops up. But, <laughs> oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Uh, but I, I did want to make sure you got some love there because it is uh, Thanks, a very Miguel. smart piece of Thank magic. Thank you. And it, it does look amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, Peter, is magic uh, to you harder on stage or close up? And which do you like more? And again, we don't have to dwell on this because I know we're trying to talk more about uh, staff. Yeah. But, you know, it's Well, close up, it's, it's a different... Um, um, with, with doing stage magic, it's really depending on circumstances. If you are visible on stage, hearable, mm -hmm. depending if there's a walking dinner or, or, or a sitting audience. So that is, in that terms, it's, it's more difficult to do stage. Uh, close up, you can just walk to a table and, and do your thing. And uh, unless there's a loud band playing, which we all know is, is a pain in the ass, but still, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, you're not that limited by circumstances. I mean, if you do stand up, um, if you want to joke, you know, if the punchline to be there, uh, you have a, like an audience that listens and sees you, you know. So you have to kind of, if you want to do stand up, make sure your circumstances are, are really good. So you are, have a good audio, good visible, like a theater setting audience, so they can only watch you. Um, not like, you know, having dinner here and oh, there's a magician and, you know, um, in that terms, stage is difficult to do, you know, and e even humor is difficult to do if you do it right. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people try to be funny to be funny. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they think if I scream, if I do strange faces, then I'm funny. But it's, it's not, it's really hard to be, to be really genuinely funny. So, um, yeah, and, uh, you know, if you're working at a table, it's, it's like, you know, you're getting more in, you know, just dive in and... Uh, and still, you have to build up a relationship with them in a very short time. But it's uh, you're just less uh, your performance is less uh, disturbed by by circumstances, you know, when doing stage show. Uh, yeah, I think stage is not it's it's underestimated. But um, yeah, yeah, people think, think it's so. just you know uh, push and play, like it's just box pushing. Yeah, but stay it's... there, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> and we we yeah. we yeah. Well, I'm actually nervous. Ever go on stage? I'm I'm nervous when I do. Table magic, not, but because, uh, well, the reason why I'm nervous when I go on stage for a large audience, because there's a central attention to you. Right. And uh, there's center of focus. And uh, because usually I know what I'm doing, but I hopefully, uh, is, is the light, you know, properly, am I properly lit? Is the audio working? Is the curtain open or not? And, is, and does it close and open on time? So everything that I don't have control of, I'm worried about. Um, so, yeah. So, stage is fun, you know, but uh, I think I prefer table magic over it because you just uh, yeah. okay. connect more to people as well. Cool. All right. Um, and again, with Stab, uh, we talked about it earlier. We've had some people, you know, we are live right now, so I want to make sure people know. Uh, you know, I've seen some general questions about skill level and things like that. Um, why don't we kind of knock that out real quick? It's, you know, I want to get through the basics as well because we do yeah, have it's, you know, a variety of people, so... It's it's uh, it's very easy. Usually the ad copy says easy to do, and right. you get it, and you think, well, it's, it's still that difficult. Right. Trust me, this is this is really really easy to do. Um, no. You don't need any skills to do it. So you can focus on your presentation. Uh, there is no switching, no palming. 
no technique required whatsoever. Once the gimmick is made up, you just can do it. I mean, once you know the workings, you can do it straight away without any practice. And it looks like, I mean, if, if you perform it, it looks like you've done it for, for many, many years. It looks that yeah. good. It's just, uh, you know, after making the gimmick, just, just give it a, and we include some, some fake bills in dollars and euros so they can make, make, make a, like a practice unit Perfect. to, to do it. But it's very, very, you know, it's totally easy. It's, it's almost self-working. You just have to put the bill in the card and stab it through, which an audience member can do as yep. per the suggestion. Uh, yeah. And we have a kind of a repeat question, Pascal saying, and it works with Euro, right? So it does work with? It works with uh, Euro, Yen, yeah. uh, any currency in the world, and, and even with plastic money. Uh, we, we said that earlier because there's, yeah. there's no reason why it shouldn't work with plastic. Uh, as you could use another playing card as well, as, as um, uh, Mark Trevisoni did, you know. Yeah, I think he said to do it with a... Um, a different, a contrasting colored card, right? Yeah, Kinda, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool so use a blue card with a yeah. hole and use a red card in it, which is nice. I mean, it's uh, no, it's a nice bonus. I think, still think, you know, a bill have people involved emotionally in it. So, uh, sure. it's of course, strong to do with the bill. And I mean, you know, a lot of people ask on these shows I do as well. Um, one of the best ways, and I'll let you fill in this blank. One of the best ways, if you're doing table hopping or walk around work, that people want to know how to make tips how to get tips is to do magic with what how to make tips well i mean what, what's the kind of what what should you use if you want people to give you a tip you should probably do magic with their money right right yeah that's of course it's yeah. it's yeah. if you have their money i mean you're, you're just one step ahead you exactly just have their money yeah so uh yeah that's you know. That's it's a, a nice if if you're if you're maybe getting underpaid. You know that's that's the way how to yeah. to get a decent uh, <laughs> income out of. But no, of course, yeah. If you have uh, if their bill, I'm not sure which amount you should borrow then. But uh, you start <laughs> with one two, yeah. a one two dollar bill will do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. true. Like that's half the battle. It's clever. Yeah, it does work that way. You know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's half yeah. the battle. Is people want to know, well, Luke, how do I get? You well, know, you give tips? it back and say, oh, it just it's yours. It's yours. Yeah, yeah have it. So, it, so you, probably, well, this is better. You can just do all evening stab, and it's the only trick you have to do. Bam, you just go bam, from table bam. to table to table. Easy. <laughs> it pays for itself the first night. <laughs> it's a great suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's half the battle. I tried myself. It? You know, it that's is half the battle. Absolutely, yeah, yes. Getting that money out. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Go. One step ahead there. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the magic from Holland, I, I, someone asked on YouTube a little while ago. I want to make sure that uh, we get this answer because uh, I'm also interested about this too. Um, will we see other releases from you or other people, or can you give us a little information about that? Because that's that's new on the radar. Yeah. Right now, so. um, well, we have a couple about eight tricks we're working on, mm -hmm. which are, um, I think three of them are mine. So I am to give you a, a sneak preview is I'm going to do something with this, uh, sort of my, well, it's a sort of, um, how do you call that? Like a perfect prediction kind of trick, hmm. okay. but with a kicker ending. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be for this. We are filming that tomorrow. Oh, cool. And then I'm going to work on, I never told this, but I, I'm, I'm working, we're actually making Exit 2.0, oh, which is the, the, pro, the pro edition, because uh, it's not the right time to market it right now, because recently there were a few versions out on the market, right. the ring to necklace, so we just wait a half year or so, or a year maybe, to, to get that out. Yeah. Um, uh, a very cool uh, card to envelope comes out, Signed card, which is not a worker, by the way. Just everything we try to design, everything to be no pipe dreams. Everything you get should be a worker. We we'll actually use it for table hopping. Uh, so no YouTube magic. Although step is is perfect for Instagram and YouTube magic. But the reason why it's so perfect because it looks exactly real life. I mean, this is this is this is exactly what you see is what you get. You right. Know, perfect for it because the illusion is is it's it's really perfect. Um, so yeah, and we have a couple of other creators. I mean, we had James Conti uh, right. that did Risen, the, the, the Rising Card mm -hmm. uh, concept, and he's, he's he's coming out with two, two cool. or three other releases as well that, that we bought. You know, we we just purchased the rights and we produce it, cool. and we um, and get it out there. So interesting new 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 
innovative creative magics coming up from Magic from Holland. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So we'll be on the lookout for that. And as far as you, uh, and I've asked you this on the side, but I, I want to ask it publicly too. Um, will we be seeing Peter Egging maybe popping up at some conventions sometime in the near future too? Because I know for a while there you were all over the scene. Uh, and then it's, yeah, well, I did, you know. I did, of course, Blackpool a couple of years, but uh, I yeah. probably will be lecturing at the, the upcoming uh, Blackpool convention. Cool. Um, cool. So working on that. And I trying for years to get to Magic Life, which never happened. And unfortunately, maybe uh, it, it'll never happen. Because, oh, don't say that, Peter. No way. Uh-uh. Uh, so it would be a great time to catch up with you and uh, some old friends. But we did IMX, and yeah, maybe we want to do that again. I'm not sure if it's 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 still... I think that I, I think it's gone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did uh, that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was good times. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be, you know... Uh, you know uh, but usually it has to be worthwhile to fly if you go to yeah. to America or to you know it, it, if you do a lecture or whatever you do you just uh, at least you're a week from home you know and so mm -hmm. you you can't book any performances so you have to you know to put it on a scale and see if it's worthwhile to fly there so that's why I'm not always there but try to yeah. usually connect it to a lecture what I do or uh, a performance you know yeah. okay. Uh, Here's a good question about some of your uh, previous work. So let's jump to this over on Facebook. Uh, out of your Haunted Deck effects, which is the best version? You've got Haunted, Haunted 2.0, or Phantom. Do you have a personal favorite from your Haunted Deck effects? And what's the deal, Peter, with you and Haunted Decks? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, I must, I must be possessed. I don't know. It's <laughs> something. It's... Well, I, I just like the concept about the mystery, the magic, and um, yeah. and the first haunted that I did with with Paul Harris, it, it was um, the dream to do a haunted deck without uh, the IT or mm -hmm. or hookup, you know. And uh, so we have the freedom here of you can do whatever you want. Even you know you can, you can even put a clear bowl over the deck of cards, and it just animates and do. Um, but. I think Haunted 2.0 is um, more, it takes out more the guesswork. Of, the first Haunted used a sort of, uh, well, I can say that, like a glue stick. Mm -hmm. And some people had issues with um, in how how much amount of that stuff uh, to be needed to get the, the proper delay. Yeah. And with 2.0, the guesswork is taken out. You just put it on there and, and you're done. Uh, but it does the exact same effect, although 2.0 has a third phase to it. Uh, which can be done as well with, with the first Haunted. I'm still using the first Haunted, to be honest, and it looks like 2.0. Okay. Um, because I I'm just, you know, get used to it and how to work with it. Um, but it, Haunted 2.0 can be done more out of the packaging straight away. Okay. And, uh, and Phantom is more a sort of utility device that you can, can do, like, more off-the-cuff uh, yeah. stuff with it, like, uh, yeah. Okay. But as for really, as for haunt, as for a haunted pack, I would go for, I think, 2.0. Uh, given the fact cool. that people don't want to guess and just open the package and just do it. Hence okay. the reason why we just came out and released 2.0 okay. to make more people happy. It's more convenient to use. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, another question about one of your older releases. This one comes from Matthew David Sheely uh, over on Facebook. I like to try to get people love. Here's uh, Matthew's question up on the screen now. Uh, hey, Matthew. Is your copy cache and card to box still available anywhere? My card box gimmick for card to box is a little overused. Just wondering for a replacement. Um, yeah, well, copy cache, I did that with, with Mark Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that. And it's unfortunately not available anymore. I think I, I just asked Mark for it, but it's just, um, uh, you know, because it was a great thing to do at lectures and convention and stuff, but uh, but he doesn't stock them anymore. And, uh, Got it. you know, I think it's lifetime expanded it's just done so um mm -hmm. i don't have any um but for i think you're referring to flight case which is the card to box oh, yeah. uh mm -hmm. yeah i still have them in stock otherwise i make them so you can just drop me a line uh just go to my website uh peter and uh just just send me an email and um i'll hook you up with it perfect no problems all right cool uh, I'm going to take a couple peeks around here to see if uh, we have any other questions. Then we're about to hit the, the one-hour mark, Peter, so I don't want to keep you too, too much longer. I did see Shin Lim pop on. Good to see Shin, as always. 
Uh, he popped on. Oh yeah, Shim saw actually stab. We just uh, he was in the Netherlands re uh, quite recently for the Dutch Magic of uh, Dutch Festival of Magic. Oh cool. And uh, I think Ron from Magic Shop showed him stab, and he uh, yeah he he was very impressed about it. So yeah. that's it's always good to hear. Yeah. Uh, as someone's asking, I guess it's, it's your buddy Jake, why didn't you go to the Dutch Festival of Magic, Peter Egging? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually I did. I went to the gala show with my wife, uh, Melissa, and uh, on a Friday night. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, you know, it's strange. I just never go to, uh, to, to Dutch conventions or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's strange. I never perform in the Netherlands. I just fly everywhere to the world, do lecturing, do lectures and perform and stuff. But in the Netherlands, it's like no, there's no reflection from it. From for some reason, there is uh, yeah. just kind of a, I don't know. It's just like like a strange thing. Like you know, for them, I'm kind of alien. I get um, it. I get it. Yeah. It's... Um, which which is totally not the okay, case. But but you know, it's <laughs> just how it goes. You know. So. Um, right. But the gala show was fun, so yeah, we did go. It, but that, I mean, just uh, you know, talked uh, with Gerd Copper with a couple of nice old friends and stuff. So it was fun. It, it was, it, it, you know, it was kind of two thirty. We get back home, so uh, mm -hmm. we just went to go to hit the, you know, to watch the gala show. So that was nice. All right. Uh, another nice um, comment here. This one comes in over on YouTube. Uh, Sven is saying Copy Cash was amazing. Still a great worker. So. Very nice to hear. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, Glad you like it. Yeah, man. I mean, Peter Egging equals good stuff. I think that's the uh, that's the common denominator here. <laughs> and that makes that that really makes my day because you're always kind of insecure about you know what you do. It's it's uh, I mean something that I like is not intentionally something that other people like, and you try to that's to. Uh, but everything comes from the heart. Everything comes really. As I think, how magic should be done. Um, so you know, it's it's um, you know, it's it's. I just making my money with still performing magic, you know, like every magician does. Um, but for me, creating is something that is is personal. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's for me. It has to be good. It has to you know, hit yeah. all the the marks before I release something. And uh, and still, you're not always you know have a home run but you just try to do you know yeah. do it the best you can and as long as it's 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 authentic it's good you know you just i mean they're all my babies and uh <laughs> but with stab i think it's um something that i really feel excited about because it's i, I just like the plot the method is great i'm sure people will love it i'm sure about it yeah all right. so uh, all right well uh we're gonna wrap this up in just a second but first i want to give you a chance um, that if people do want to keep up with you, uh, whether it's online, if you have a website, or like I mentioned before, if you are going to make any appearances uh, anywhere where people might be able to see you, can you give the guys uh, just a little info about Peter Eggink and where to uh, where to find you? The floor yeah, is you yeah, know, sure. yours. Uh, promote away. There you go. Yeah, well, um, I have a website. It's www.peterstripeegging.com. It's mm -hmm. my website. And uh, on there, you see uh, all the latest stuff that I release. It's, it's on there. And uh, contact page, there's my email, my phone number, um, everything you want to know. Uh, so if you have any questions or you have, you know, uh, any concerns, whatever it might be, or you just want to do a quick chat about something that uh, you want to talk about with me, just go ahead. Just hit me a line and send me an email or drop me a line and uh, cool. I'm glad to help. So PeterEgging.com. That's my website. And... For the rest, uh, you can also check magicfromholland.com, which is, um, if you want to keep an eye on that production line of, of, of tricks that we're coming up with, uh, you can check magicfromholland.com as well. Uh, there you see the, the newest releases that are coming up from that from that label, cool. um, which is um, exciting, exciting stuff coming up. Yeah. It's so yeah, if there are any questions still regarding staff, or just feel free to drop me a line directly at info at peterstripeegging.com but it's also my website just go there and uh, cool. and you'll, you'll be good and uh, it's nice to hear I'm just going to pop back up on the screen real quick it's nice to hear you have uh, some other things uh, coming out that are your own so we'll be seeing those do you think 
Uh, we're about to hit the uh, six-month mark for this year. Will we see any other things from you this year or maybe early 18 for some of those new things you mentioned? I think they'll see um, at least, uh, one, well, no, two releases, I think. Yeah, yeah we're just you know, wrapping up tomorrow um, cool. uh, Prevision. It's called Prevision, okay. this is, this is, which is my uh, um, perfect prediction. In fact, so we uh, th that's coming out. I think um, begin August, and then cool. one probably in December or whatever. So, so I think two releases this year. Yeah, sweet. Sounds good. Just fine tune it because uh, we have to be really happy with it before we you know go out there and yeah, because you can do it one time right. So I uh, want to make it right the first time. So well said. Uh, and I guess tonight, the, the biggest trick that you've pulled off, Peter, is the vanishing light trick because it's gotten kind of dark where you are now. <laughs> well, actually, I am, I am better in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slowly started to get darker where you are. It's a fading. Of, well, there's a big, huge window here in the attic. Uh, and and it's just, you know, it's getting darker now, which <laughs> means it's, it's about 10 past 10. Yeah. 10 past, what is it, 4? What, here? Your no. time? Uh, well, that would be, yeah, East Coast just hit 4, 10 in the afternoon for me. It's still 1 o'clock in the afternoon in beautiful, sunny Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> sunny. Sunny. I had to well, enjoy there. Vegas. Yeah, well, I will. And I, I really, really enjoyed uh, this chat and, and getting to catch up with you. And uh, Oh, me too. Um, it's been a long time. I, I mean, um, I'm looking forward to meet up with you again at some convention someday. And, uh, yeah. Well, and everybody that's you know who chimed in, thank you so much for your time, and um, I appreciate the support of my magic. So thank you. Oh yeah, Peter Egging in the house. All right, Peter. Well, I'm going to wrap this up, and then I'll uh, chat with you real quick after I do this. This will just take a minute, and then I'll. Uh, All right, look. Cool. All right. Going to sure. pop back over to yeah, my nice. shot, guys. I want to thank Peter for his time. Uh, it is late in the evening where he is uh, over on the other side of the world, so I want to say thank you to him. Uh, and also to all of you for joining us today. You know, we, uh, we do these shows each and every Wednesday, noon Pacific. Uh, that is 3 p.m. Eastern time for you guys out there. And uh, sometimes we have guests. You know, this week we have Peter Egging. Uh, sometimes we do shows about you guys. You know, we uh, answer some questions for you, do live Q&A sessions from me to you. And sometimes we actually feature your video clips right here on the show too. So uh, stay tuned, you know, each and every Wednesday. And if you do want to make sure you keep up with us, if you're watching us over on Facebook on your mobile device, all you need to do is click the follow button uh, or turn those notifications on. You get notified every time. We do go live and over on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe to us uh, and you also will get notified every time we go live over there too. So a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, I do want to say uh, again, um, you know, with STAB in particular, this is something that I know that you're going to have a lot of fun with. That's why we wanted to do this is to try to get as many details for you. Uh, as possible about this brand new release. Here it is up on the screen once more. The best part about Stab, other than it being from Peter Egging, it's only 20 bucks. I mean, come on guys, that's a steal. Uh, this is something you can do um, and you can really milk that magic moment. I mean, you see that when you restore the bill at the end, it looks like real magic. So pick that up now and uh, you will be happy with the results. I am certain of that. All right. Uh, so thank you guys for all the good questions today. Had a lot of them, we tried to get as many as possible. Um, if you just tuned in now, you can catch the replay and get all the details from Peter himself. All right. And it sounds like Peter's got some more things in the work. So don't miss those. We'll be sure to keep you posted when those are hitting the market too. All right. That's it from me. Thank you guys for all the support, all the fun. We'll be back again next Wednesday, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Do it all over again. I may have some other guests pop up sometime in the meantime too. We've got some other really fun things planned for you. So uh, you don't want to miss out on those. All right. And my screen just turned off behind me. So I think that means it's time to go. All right, guys. That is it for me this week. I will catch you all on the flip side. And thank you once more. It's Mr. Peter Egging. All right. Catch you guys later.